Hello guys, I'm building my app that creates meal plans. Last time I've created the system design. In this episode I'm focusing on setting up the database. I've been thinking a lot about what tables do I need and how should I structure the data. I've come up with the following solution. I've created a diagram that visualizes all the tables. For every table I've added an ID as a primary key and created that and updated that fields to track the row changes over time. So I won't mention this over and over again. To begin with there will be users in the application of course. So that's the first table that needs to be defined. I will only have OAuth login in the app. That Way I don't need to deal with passwords. A user has a name, an email address and a picture associated with them. This is basically what is returned by the Google OAuth API. Every user has a session when they are using the application. I've created a utility table to accommodate session handling. That is done by Lucia. Now let's start implementing all these tables. The application will use Drizzle as an ORM. I am not a big fan of ORMs as they add an extra layer of complexity to the application as you need to learn to use the ORM itself. And other projects might use different ORMs thus your knowledge is not transferable. In comparison using only SQL directly can be used for every project. And debugging will be most likely done with SQL queries. Anyway, I like how Drizzle operates, it seems to be fairly simple to use and their documentation is good. So I'm giving it a chance. I decided to use Terzo as my data. Database. It's built up on SQLite, which is more than enough for the scope of this project. It has many great features as local replicas that I'm the most excited about. Basically, all the write requests are going to the master database, which is hosted by Terzo, and there is a local copy that the application is reading from. This enables sub millisecond read speeds, but I have to sync the database myself. The following tables are created based on the feature requirements. The main feature of the application is the creation of meal plans, but meal plans need recipes, and the recipes need ingredients to begin with. Let's start with that. An ingredient has a name and listing its nutritional values as fat, protein and carbohydrate content for 100 grams. I'm also creating types for every table along the way so I can type safely develop the application. I have also defined a unit table so the recipes can specify which unit are they in and to facilitate conversion between metric and imperial units based on user preference. I'm just copy pasting so I don't have to retype similar fields. A unit has a name like gram, kilo, teaspoon, etc. I want to categorize recipes which one is for breakfast, for lunch and dinner. That categorization is done by the recipe type table. It will just hold an enum with the values of breakfast, lunch and dinner, with the ability to extend it further in the future. Finally, I can define a recipe table. It has a recipe type ID which is a foreign key referencing the recipe type table and the name. But where are the ingredients and all the other data, you may be wondering. Is the recipe still missing the ingredients? I've created an association table called recipe ingredient that references a recipe, an ingredient, an amount for the ingredient and a unit for the ingredient. Simply put, it describes how much should be used from that given ingredient. There is a requirement to support multiple languages. To enable multi-language support, I've created a supported language table that holds a language. This way every table I want can be localized. To localize an ingredient, I've also created a translation table for it called Ingredient Translation. It references an ingredient and the language and holds the localized name. Localized recipes are stored in the recipe translation table. It references a recipe ID, a language ID that specifies which is the language of the recipe. A recipe has a brief description to explain what is this recipe about, and an instruction with all the steps required to prepare it. Units also need to be translated via the unit translation table. It references the unit ID, the language ID and holds the translated unit's name. You may have noticed that in the recipe, ingredient and unit tables I have an unused name field. I'm keeping that for sanity reasons so I can double check that if I pair the translation with the right recipe. As I've defined the requirements in the system design video, the users can have references. I've created a user preference table. It references the user ID. A user can set their weight as it will serve as the base for macronutrient calculations. I've added a field for unit so the user can choose between imperial and metric systems. Now the app has the ability to store localized recipes, but I have to make sure the user will get favorable recipes recommended. For that, I need to know what kind of ingredients do they like. I've created another association table called ingredient preference that connects a user and an ingredient. Users will have the ability to give feedback on recipes. They can like a recipe to get it recommended more often or dislike it to be recommended rarely. For this I've created two more association tables called liked recipes and disliked recipes. 
Finally, for a meal plan, I came up with a table named Weekly Meal Plan. With this table structure, each row represents a day within a weekly meal plan that started on the date referenced by week start date. The meal date column allows to specify the date for each meal. While the breakfast recipe ID, lunch recipe ID and dinner recipe ID columns store the foreign keys referencing the recipe table for each meal suggestion. Each meal has an amount that suggests how much should you eat for that meal. Now that all tables are ready, they can be exported. I can lean back and let Drizzle work its magic by pushing all the changes into Terzo. It shows all the SQL that was generated. Let's see how it looks like in Terzo. It has an intuitive UI that enables management of databases. After quickly signing in, I want to verify that the database tables were created successfully. I can see that all the tables are present. Inspecting closer the recipe table. Unit table seems ok. The user table too. Ingredient also. Most importantly, Terzo has a very generous free tier that makes it an ideal choice for my pet project. In the free tier, they allow 1 billion row reads and 25 million row writes every month. That should cover the needs of my application. My dogs were having a great time on the couch and now they want some love and attention in the form of a walk. So let's go outside, breathe some fresh air, enjoy the weather and see the nature. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.